Bruce said you could do hundreds of miles on a Mars bar. I did a hundred miles on a bicycle yesterday. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of changing to a Mars bar. <laughs> that saddle is a bit um, hard. Life planning. Um, when you get further down the running order that you are, and you listen to whatever else is saying, you start crossing off bits that you were going to say. So my ten minutes might not be. Um, I want to take a look at it from a slightly different angle, really. Um, and the questions and how I got into it is that uh, I sort of why life planning in the first place. And there were two, uh, really two things that were happening to me at the time. I kept seeing too many people, sometimes my own clients, or clients of other people who were not following through with the financial plans that we created. You'd put all of this work together and you'd, you'd, you'd give them the financial plan and they would tick box the bits that they were comfortable doing and they wouldn't do the bits that you felt were you know, possibly you know, an integral part and critical. So why was it that they were not, they were paying us all this money that they were not following through? The other part is that I've been taking personal coaching um, since about 1997. One way or another I've had some kind of life coach. And I always thought that that's the space I, I wanted to be in because for me, the financial planner is the ultimate life coach and my life coach was charging me more per hour than I was charging my clients. Um, in fact, my current life coach that I'm just about to engage wants to charge me £400 an hour, which I think is worth paying. Um, and what I've got to do is get myself in that space in my client's mind because I'm doing as good work. So I think that life planning is integral in, uh, to what we do. Um, and so much that I've set my business up in that way is that pretty much all I do in my work with clients is to sit down and do the life planning work or the life coaching, if that's what you want to call it. That's, and that's the bit that really engages me as Bruce has said, it's all about finding out about people and their lives. And the bits that I've, the bits of work that I've enjoyed doing at times, when you sit down there and you just find out about things that you would never, ever guess if you just started to talk to them about money. Because money is boring. I hate it. And that's why I have three power planners. And they do the financial planning and they do the um, IFA work, finding out which is the best product. I am moving further and further away and I'm liking it a lot. But it's not for everybody. Um, or if it is for everybody, it comes in a slightly uh, different layers and different depths, and this is what I've found. Um, and it, for me, it's all to do with trust and creating a safe container where people are prepared to talk to you about what their deepest passions are. And it would make them some surprise to people who have been with me on the George Kinder Five Day. But <clears throat> I have not shared all of the things that are really important to me, even though I've been life planning. Because I've not felt as though I've been in a safe place. So it doesn't surprise me that the work that I do with my clients doesn't take one year, two year, three years. It's constantly evolving with them as a life planning process. Um, and we start at one level and we find as they, they become more trust, trustful of the process and they become more trustful of what we're doing, that they begin to open up a little bit more. So we don't stop. We ask these three questions, because I'm a, a person who uses the kinder methodology. I ask those three questions each time I have a, an annual review with these clients. Um, because I find that out of that, becomes uh, I get deeper and more work comes out of there. And also... I think hitting clients with this thing the first time is that they're a little bit taken aback because that's not necessarily the reason they walked in the door. And to be given these three questions and they'll come up with things fairly um, superficially. And then they go home and they start mulling up, uh, on these things. And they begin to think a little bit deeper themselves about what it is that is really important to them in their lives. Um, and I see those shifts not happening necessarily after that first meeting, but I see the shifts happening two and three and four years down the line. Real shifts, I mean, not just that I'm going to get rid of the expensive cars and start doing this, or whatever it is that, that you might be able to achieve in that first meeting, but the real shifts. 
So for me, it comes down an awful lot to trust and just creating that environment. And a lot of that trust and environment, to me, is down to how I charge for it. We charge very, very little for the money side of what we do. But we do charge, not as much as my, uh, my own personal coach, but we do charge quite a lot of money for sitting down and spending time with me. That's the thing that I've got to exchange. Time and some knowledge. So we charge for that. Broadly, there's an hourly rate that sits behind everything we do. But we want to be able to kind of put a cap on that. And we'll work with people. We have a set number of hours that we think the process takes through experience. So we charge for that. To become a client of my firm will cost you at least two and a half thousand pounds. Because that's how long I think it takes to do those feeling finds and the fact finds. If there's any work to come on the back of that, that is charged on top. Um, and when I say it's not for everybody, um, it is for all of our clients. So we have a screening process to make sure that we only attract, or we try to only attract, those clients that will engage with us as deep as we want them to engage so they get something out of it. So all the language that we use in our material and on the website, uh, in our brochures and the, even in our presentation, is all around um, life and less around um, benchmarks and money and cash. I don't want that analytical type because they're just not suited to us. There are plenty of other people that can work with them better. We don't want to run money. We, we want to help them run their life better. So, we, you know, our charging structure is based around that. Our language is based around that. Um, our brochures, our website, our colour, everything we do is trying to present something that is a little softer and less of a technical space. Um, and we find that it works and we do attract a reasonable steady stream of people that actually want to see some change in their lives. They've, they've had enough of, of going to see people who are promising, promising them that, you know, that the 10% return, that this, that, that, or the other. They kind of just want a bit of, a bit of truth and honesty around it and just try and find out what is important to them. Um, even then, it doesn't work for everybody. And it is around creating that space and that trust around them that we've got to work really hard at. Um, I had a client come through last year where we were working very, very closely. We were getting some, um, I thought we were getting really, really deep. And I just asked a question, at which point you said, butt out. I'm not going there with you. I'm not ready to go there with you. I like the work that you do, and I'm still going to pay your fees. And she char we charge her 5000 a year. Um, but she wasn't ready to do that at that point. Um, until she had taken some life coaching somewhere else um, and then came back you know, the following year to work with us. So, you know, I have to appreciate that they've got boundaries too. Um, and I'm aware of that because when I took my first bit of life coaching, um, I was getting some incremental gains for about two years, small incremental gains in my life, but nothing that was really big and nothing that was really changing until about two years in. Um, when I said, well, actually, the, the, the deepest issue that I have that I want to talk about is this. Um, and, you know, I discussed that issue, we had that issue, and got it out of the way. And then the next thing, my life moved um, uh, just considerably. Um, <coughs> I've talked about fees. So, yeah, that's it. For me, life planning. Uh, has been a huge change personally and in my business and my whole business is about that to the point where I might um, decide to move out of the money business altogether you know, and kind of park that elsewhere but there's much more value to be had I find in speaking to people about what it is they want to achieve and helping them achieve that and coaching and counselling and getting to that position and it, for me it's as simple as that the money, I've been doing it for 20 odd years, I'm bored rigid with it. Um, my power planners love it for some strange reason. Um, I let them carry on, but I don't want to go there anymore. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's short and sweet from me. That's where we're at. If you've got any questions later on, I'll be happy to answer them.